Hi traders, I would like to show you some of my live trades today. We're going to start with Tesla. It is anticipated, it was anticipated, so I mentioned in the trading room before the session started today that Tesla is going to move up today. Why? Because it's joining the S&P 500 index on Monday. That's just over this weekend and therefore a lot of funds must buy Tesla because it just joined and the last uh, day to do that is today. So I'm looking for a long, Scott just posted it in the trading room for a long over 670. Look at the sellers here. Once they move over 670, I'm going to go long. It just did and I'm clicking the button here and I'm long 4,000 shares. And now it's spiking up as expected and we're looking for a quick partial here because it's extremely dangerous. That's just a second one minute candle and look at how it goes. We already have three, four points and it's going higher. Looking for the first sign of a failure here uh, to take my partial. I'm going to sell 3,600 shares and uh, look at the buyers, look at the sellers. Just moved under 674 and I'm clicking the button and I took my partial. That was an amazing $15,000 trade or so. And uh, well, I still have 400 shares and it rested a little bit right now. You couldn't have known if it's going to rest, come down or continue higher. But as you can see, it's just moving to a new high. So I'm looking for opportunity now to sell another 300 shares out of my 400. As you can see, I'm already ready with 300 order. It's just spiking up some more. Here comes eight points, almost nine points. And I just uh, took another partial here, sold another 300 shares. And that was my starting trade for the day. A $15,000 trade. It's just uh, three minutes into the trading session. And traders, if you did like this video, please give us a thumb up so we can move to the next videos. Thumb up helps uh, the YouTube algorithm to uh, show these videos to more traders. And that means that uh, more people are going to join and watch more videos like that. And hopefully it helps you and help other people as well. So let's move to the next trade and see what happened. My second trade for the day is space. Now I was hoping that space is going to come down. You're about to see a losing trade. And um, as you can see, it gapped down, moved higher, and now it's reversing. So I'm getting ready to short it. I'm just about to short it now as it is reversing. So technically this trade looks like uh, a lot of shorted now, 4,000 shares. This looks like quite the same type of trades I usually usually do, but it's not. It did not work out. You, you will soon see that I had a loser here. So it kind of stopped here and then moved over the highs. And uh, the thing is, you know, there's one thing you need to notice all the time when you're looking for a gap and go. The first move up was pretty strong. It closed approximately 40% of the gap. See, that's the whole gap over here. And it closed, it closed approximately 40%. That means a lot of upside momentum. And when you see a stock moving up that much after a gap down, well, you are in trouble. And I did not really notice that. So now take a look at uh, uh, the way it gets back to the highs. And now I'm about to stop it over the highs. Just moved over the highs, closed that trade. I have a loser. So as you can see, the mistake in space, and you need to remember that, was the fact that it was not holding down after the gap down. It moved higher. Yes, I do always look for them to move higher and then short them as they come down. But if it moved higher and closed approximately 40% of the gap, that's a very dangerous uh, thing to do, short it after a reversal. My next trade is mRNA. Take a look at the two one minute candles to start that started the day with mRNA as they coming down and establish quite a strong downside momentum. And there's a pullback candle there, one small green candle. Now it's coming back down and I just shorted 4,000 shares because it's showing me that it has a downside momentum, a very strong downside momentum. So mRNA is probably under a lot of pressure, but now as you can see, I'm playing in between green and red because it went sideways for a while. But notice the fact that it's coming down and establishing quite an interesting support at around the 137.50 mark. And I am looking at the stock as it really is just downtrending. There's nothing wrong that happened with this one. And it just went sideways and I'm about to add, once it comes under 137.50, another 4,000 shares. It's about to happen right now. So take a look at that point right where it breaks the support level. And that would be the point right now where I added another 4,000 shares. So uh, once it really in my eyes established the trend, I was adding to a winning trade. My earlier entry was under 138 and look at this beautiful breakdown. That was just absolutely amazing and I'm about to take my partial right here and that's it. Now any sign of pullback took my partial. So that was an amazing trade with mRNA. It was 
trending lower. Yes, at some point it was going sideways. At some point I felt like maybe I'm going to have a loser. But the fact was, if you take a look at the overall trend, the stock is just coming down. Be careful of having too tight stops in stocks that you're trading. Sometimes they will take you out when the stock in fact did nothing wrong. If you take a look at the trend of mRNA right now, you see there's nothing wrong happened. And once it proved to you that it can do what you expected it to do, meaning for example, break down under the lows or even before that, you could add to a winning trade. You never add to a losing trade, never ever add down your losses. But once it proves to you that it really wants to go your way, yes, you can add as I just added to mRNA and the rest is a fantastic trade for me today. Now here's the last trade I'm going to show you today that was the short in Boeing. Boeing is at the highs, it looks like it's about to continue higher, but no, I'm about to short. And in fact, I'm going to short a little bit more than my regular size, 6,000 shares, because I really, really like it short now. Now it looks to you like uh, Boeing is trending higher and should continue trending higher, not in my opinion, and I'm going to show you why very soon. Now look at what happened to Boeing, and uh, well, that was a, that is a very fast forward now. As you can see, it's just playing around a little bit, but uh, mainly coming down, trending lower, and my expectation was that I'm going to see Boeing under the lows. Look at the nice way it uh, continues to come down. Now, the reason for shorting Boeing today is quite simple. Airlines, at the same time that Boeing was at the highs, were at the lows or close to the lows, and it looked to me like the airlines are about to come down, and Boeing is usually following the airlines. So you see, when the airlines are about to break down and Boeing is at the highs and the S&P is trending lower, then Boeing really doesn't have much of a chance to continue trending higher. Now look at this beautiful breakdown already up $5,000, $6,000, $7,000 and keeps coming. Now it just reached a new low. I'm about to take my partial right now, 5,600 shares, clicking the button, 57, left 300 shares. And uh, look at this beautiful momentum in Boeing as it came down. The whole idea of taking a stock like that for the short side is not just the technical formation of the stock itself because Boeing was trending higher. It's about the market. The S&P is coming down. Why is Boeing at the highs? Well, it could be. The airlines are coming down now. You can take a look at uh, United Airlines, American Airlines. I'm going to show you some, some charts right now so you can understand that. But the basic idea was how come Boeing is at the highs? Not likely therefore short. Now let's take a look at what happened with Boeing and with the airlines today. As you can see here, that was my entry to Boeing here, just under 222.80 or so. That's the point where I shorted it. That's the point where it started coming down. Now take a look at the airlines at the same time, near the lows. They did not break down the lows yet, but as you can see, they were quite close. They were trending lower and finally they did break down. So at that point, Finally, Boeing started going with the airlines. So Boeing does not live in its old world. It was trending higher. Why? Because, well, there were more buyers than sellers in Boeing because somebody wanted to buy and usually it happens during the first 10 minutes or so of the trading session. That's why, as you can see here, Boeing was moving higher. You also need to take a look at the S&P 500. Look at the S&P 500, the way it comes down with a lot of downside momentum. And again, you ask yourself, why did Boeing went higher? Well, it happens but then it cannot stay there. It's likely to come down. You need to follow the stock that you're trading. You need to take a look at a nice technical formation for a short. You need to take a look at the sector. You need to take a look at the S&P 500 and then make up your mind about going short as stock. Now, as you can see, my end result here is uh, very nice. I'm up $26,000 for today. I had three winners, uh, two losers. I didn't uh, have the time to show you all my winners and my losers here today, but that was a very nice uh, fourth winning day for the week, one losing day for this week. And at this point, I want to thank you for watching this video. And if you do want to see any more day trading content, make sure that you subscribe and turn the notification bell on so that you will be notified of my future uploads. Also, if you like to trade with me, if you like to read my book, if you like to get some more free trading, day trading resources, make sure that you click on some of the links right here below. Uh, they're totally free. So just uh, stay green, have a great weekend and uh, happy holidays. See you next week.